The death of a child is an unspeakable tragedy. And for parents left behind, the question becomes how to give meaning to the lives they lost. Jim Axelrod has one family story about the healing power of art. There was no way Mark and Jan Lawrence could have known what life would hold for their adorable twins, Will and Joe. Joey, get on the thing, stand up. Whoa, big Joe. Yay, Will. Couldn't tell one from the other, and you know, Joe and Will, and who's Joe, who's Will, so they just very quickly became Joe Will. Even, you know, relatives would, hi, Joe Will. Oh, you scared me. No way to know what was coming, and perhaps no way to go on if they had. These guys weren't just close. There was almost an interconnectedness. Oh, yeah. yeah. That will be a When they were little, if Will fell, Joe cried harder than Will did. You pushed him. In high school, the boys discovered art. Their teachers, Basil Smotherman and Vicki Ayers, were stunned by the way they expressed their individuality. They were living, breathing, and drinking this. While also remaining tightly connected to each other. I would walk in on them working, and they'd be looking at each other's work, but they were not saying a word. And I remember joking with them once, are, are you talking telepathically? Their senior self-portraits, Wills, a teenage boy with spiky hair and pimples, his parents called Big Face, and Joe's, made from thousands of magazine fragments, left no doubt the twins were special. On average, you wouldn't see this work coming from a high school kid. After high school, Joe moved to New York City to study at the Cooper Union, while Will was far away at the Art Institute of Chicago. Did you anticipate there were going to be some issues when it came time to separate? No. We just thought they are going to get their own identities and create their own little worlds. But in the fall of 2004, it became clear those worlds were filled with suffering. We got a call and his roommate had said that he attempted to take his life. Mark and Jan Lawrence, who'd watched their boys' interconnectedness from infancy, knew what threatened one would also threaten the other. Did any part of you think we better keep a close eye on Will as well? Absolutely. Well, we did, but Will, I mean, he basically stomped his foot and said, I would never do that. Yeah. I would never do that. But Joe Will were in the grips of depression. Jan and Mark tried everything. Joe would attempt to take his life again in 2006, but fail. Five years later, Will would succeed in taking his. He was 26. Knock at the door. Knock at the door, yeah. It was a police officer and a chaplain. And Mark was standing with them, and he said, it's Will, he died. And I fell to the brick entry, I mean, and just started Collapsed. screaming. How did Joe react? He said, oh, I knew he died the second he died. I knew it. Yeah. Joe, I, I read somewhere the way he expressed his feelings. Right. He felt like half of him had died as well. Oh, absolutely. That's, and he said that. It was just too painful for Joe. After Will was yeah. gone, Joe put these together in the scrapbook. In 2017, six years after Will's death, police were once again knocking on the Lawrence's front door. You knew. Yeah. I just said to him, I said, it's our son, isn't it? Joe was 32. The degree to which you two must have been shattered is incomprehensible. And it literally is the very beginning. You feel like, when do, how come my arms are so heavy? I mean, you don't even feel like you can lift up the glass of water. A half a dozen years later, where are you with your grief? You go forward, then you come backwards. The thing is, you're shattered in a million pieces, and then you rebuild your wholeness. You're not going to ever be the same. Part of the Lawrence's healing was found in their son's work. They'd been prodigious. Sketches, sculptures, paintings. How much of their stuff do you have? Hundreds and hundreds of things that are like this scale. Are they in every closet? Yeah, under okay. the beds. <laughs>
Are you still finding work mm -hmm. that you didn't know existed? Yeah. Stuff keeps surfacing that you think, well, I thought I'd found it all. It's like we always yeah. go, hi, Joe, hi, Will, when, yeah. you know, something happens. We call them God winks or little winks. Um, so we get winks all the time. The Lawrences felt those winks had power in them, power they wanted others to feel. Last April, an exhibit opened at the Indianapolis Arts Center. Joe Will, Better Together. We were delighted to find out we were having twins. We didn't know they were going to be identical twin boys until they were actually born. Short videos told their story and spread awareness. Let me tell you something about depression. It's not a personal weakness. It's a medical condition. More than 100 of their works were curated by exhibitions manager Alex Moore. If you walk into a space digesting certain struggles of your own and you see those reflected in the objects, that's validating. It tells you that you're not alone. It tells you that your experience is human. And that life can be a heavy lift. And so maybe seeing somebody else expressing your pain mm -hmm. lightens your load. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I just want to welcome all of you. Mark and Jan found enormous comfort there. The boys are here. They're filling the halls. They're talking to us. The boys are here. Was it therapeutic to be able to visit with them again? Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. We went, we went at almost least every day. almost every day yeah. for the two months. I mean, I yeah. feel like I was not even walking on the ground. Right. I felt elevated, right. not just emotionally yeah. and spiritually, but physically. I thought, am I levitated? It was pure joy. It was magic. They were there. Which is why outside the art center, in front of this sculpture called Confluence, the Lawrences spread some of their son's ashes. What was supposed to be a limited run of Joe Will's work will now have a permanent gallery. In death, they will continue to educate, inform, and hopefully inspire. It's almost inconceivable that any mother and father could carry this burden. Why are you telling their story? I want to celebrate their talent. I don't want to focus on how they died. We want to celebrate their accomplishments and their enduring legacy of the artwork that they left behind. They aren't suffering. They're together, and they are one.